Hi everyone, it's Donna Doherty and today we're going to be talking about the Holy Trinity. It's faith and fun with Donna and uh, we get creative, maybe de-stress a little bit as we color on the coloring pages that I'm using, different designs and different concepts to talk about faith subjects. So let's get creative. Over the past um, month or two since we started doing um, these videos in our shelter in place or shelter in grace. Um, I've come up with different projects that we could do and I just wanted to talk about how um, you can do things that are very simple um, to talk about a subject like we had the Holy Spirit where you could have uh, downloaded a page like this very simple easy to color based on your ability or maybe for kids. Um, you could do that and experiment with this. You could also take these projects and turn them into something greater by tracing them onto watercolor paper and making them watercolor, um, whatever you would like to do as you get creative. And oftentimes I take these ideas or projects and build on them. So this project was from, um, the original coloring page was from St. Anne's Helper and it had this stained glass window in the center. And then I took it um, and built upon it to talk about how um, the Spirit was going to be coming and the scripture for that week talked about the Spirit of Truth and um, how that Spirit also helps us to have the Eucharist during the Mass um, and the Divinity and the Real Presence of Jesus in the Eucharist and how we needed to take all of this home. So you could take a project and then build on it to give the message that you wanted. Today we were talking about the Holy Trinity because it's the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity tomorrow. And um, this was another page from the Catholic Kid. So this is a simple representation that would be easy to understand for um, pretty much any age group. We have Jesus, God the Father, and um, he's holding the world. So this might be modeled after one of the paintings that you might see um, that would be sacred art. And then the Holy Spirit is up there represented as the dove. Uh, you could tell that this is Jesus probably because of, you know, the way he, he looks. We kind of make him look the same so he's recognizable. But he does have the hole in his hand from the crucifixion. And God the Father is holding his hand up in a blessing. So when a priest, uh, pope, bishop, cardinal gives their apostolic blessing, or even a deacon can do that, um, they hold their hand in a certain way. And this uh, is when they make the sign of the cross over something. So that is something very unique, a special blessing that you can get. And that is one of the ways we're going to even see today that God the Father is represented in art. So you know that who he is. So you could draw in some of the um, continents on here and make it look like the, uh, the world. You could make these clouds representing they are all together one in heaven because we're talking about the Trinity, a unity of three persons in one, which is a pretty difficult subject for any age to understand because um, it doesn't really make sense to us in this world today how three things could be one. Uh, St. Patrick used the example of how that happens when you look at a shamrock. There are three leaves on the one branch of that plant, and um, they are all united and together, uh, growing from that same uh, life force that, that connects it to the plant. So uh, when we think about the Trinity, we also think about how um, the Father, the Father and Jesus their love for each other is a living thing. And that's where we get the Holy Spirit, that breath of life that we talk about in Genesis, um, that we talk about in Pentecost, which we just experienced. So um, this animation, which comes, maybe people hear a lot about anime, um, that force of life that makes things come alive and um, active is the Holy Spirit. And we want to make sure that we include asking the Holy Spirit for help every single day. So if you watch my um, other video from this week on Wednesday, the 430 word is live uh, on Wednesdays. 
I talk a little bit more about that too. Today's subject being uh, stained glass, I wanted to show you this is the project we're working on today and um, it has some very vibrant colors and as usual I'm using simple uh, materials that you might have like Crayola markers and pencils to do this project so it's not going to look exactly the same but you can print this out from the Faith Formation page or uh, linked in the YouTube channel um, posting. You can see that there are different ways that stained glass can look. This one looks very clear um, and you can tell that there are variations within it. It almost looks crackled. Um, so I'm going to bring that up kind of close to talk about how this one has like even texture in it. So when you look at stained glass, the next time you go to a church, go up close and look at it. One of my favorite ones was uh, downtown at Old St. Michael's and the way that the artist made um, the fabric of the, the cloak and the garments, it almost looks like um, velvet. It almost looks textured or 3D. I don't even know how to explain it. So this is like a really amazing um, thing that you could do as an artisan to make stained glass. I wanted to show you that included in today's project also, well, this piece is uh, the piece of glass, but you can see that within this, it is painted, and I use that term loosely different than actually painting with um, paints on top of it, but within the glass, they have made this picture. So you can see details and shadows and beads on this garment and even the tassels, the fringe there. Uh, so today's stained glass, we're going to take a, a look at ways that we can make these variations just like this wing and the dove that we're doing um, and uh, color our coloring page. So in today's project, we're looking at the Holy Trinity. And if you printed out your picture on uh, regular copy paper, this is what it would look like. And um, this is mine, which I've pretty much finished, except for a couple of things that I was going to show you. Um, I used both the uh, colored pencils and the marker. I really love the way that the um, blue marker helped this really stand out. And I used yellow and orange uh, markers from the Crayola set to do some of this, the red, because uh, I really wanted those elements to stand out more. This is yellow, and I'll explain more how I incorporated both of those. But you can see in the picture, there are um, the drawing is already there, and then these lines are darker for the pieces of glass that the stained glass would be um, placed and put together with that leading, although they don't really use lead anymore. Um, but to uh, join those pieces of glass together and it usually is looking black. So I did go over already these parts with my fine point Sharpie so that they would stand out more, but I didn't finish all of it. So you can see down here, I did all of this with the black Sharpie, but I haven't done that yet here. And you can tell the difference in um, the vibrancy or the clarity of the picture, this stands out way more with that black line. Uh, so when we look at the Holy Trinity, we are talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So in this stained glass window that um, someone had uh, drawn on their own and put together, uh, copying this stained glass picture, we are talking about God the Father, and there's that hand in the position of blessing. Uh, but it says Y-H-W-H, so that would be the Hebrew word um, that was Yahweh, a word that was not spoken by the Hebrews. Um, so traditional Jewish um, followers would not say God's name, and that was his name in the um, Old Testament. And then we have Abba, and that's what Jesus called God the Father. So Abba is uh, an endearment, so it's like saying Daddy or Papa. So it meant like a very close thing with the Father. Um, and I actually like the way that both of those are on there because in the Old Testament, sometimes we think of God as um, as a, a judge and um, 
maybe even harsh or, uh, you know, doling out punishments. We have the opposite of that with Abba, Daddy, and a merciful, loving God. So we kind of look at God in numerous ways and to remember that even though God in the Old Testament uh, might have been strict or um, really strong, stern at times, he also was very loving and made those covenants in the Old Testament that um, he said he would be faithful no matter what we did. Um, he wouldn't uh, destroy the world because he does love us and he's giving us another chance. And then Jesus comes as our Savior and he is the Lamb. So we talk about the Lamb and the uh, Passover and um, that story. And Jesus is now the Lamb of God. We hear that in the New Testament. So you see the Lamb here with the cross and um, the banner. Uh, that is a very typical way to show Jesus in um, in a sacred art picture or uh, in another way of teaching who he is. Um, you hear of that um, comparison in Revelations in the New Testament. So um, this is an example of Jesus without giving him a face and human appearance, but what he was for us, and that was the sacrificial lamb, and he died on the cross which gains us heaven. Um, and then you see the uh, sign of the holiness, this idea of the uh, halo around their head that is typical of sacred art that reminds us that, that the person that we're talking about is holy. And in this case, it's God in the Trinity. So the three circles are um, intertwined and united because they are together as one. And then we have the Holy Spirit, which is the dove. And the Holy Spirit um, was a dove when it appeared over uh, Jesus. And God's words were heard that this is my beloved son. Listen to him. So we have this example of the dove uh, in numerous ways in the Bible. And we also have the seven flames to remind us of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that we receive in baptism and are stirred up and... Um, enlivened again, enkindled, as they say in the Come Holy Spirit prayer during um, Pentecost and for us in confirmation. And um, that we have the three holy, 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 something that you would have heard in the Old Testament. One of my favorite um, fun facts is that they would have said holy three times to um represent how holy so they didn't in hebrew have holy holier and holiest so they would repeat the word so that you would know and even jesus says amen amen i say to you he'll repeat the word saying pay attention this is really important so um here we go we're going to talk a little bit about uh how to color the first things that I started with is I looked at my um, picture and tried to pick out the things that I thought were most vibrant and then I made those uh, parts of the picture with marker. So you can see that I uh, did this part with the gray marker and filled that in for each one and, um, and then also did the uh, line line here with the orange but then when I was looking at the uh, stained glass and um, brought it up closer I could see that this was kind of a mottled color and it was almost like clear glass so it had a little gray in it well I don't have a gray pencil so I was using my black because black and white make um, make gray. We're using our white paper to uh, make this a gray color. So I'm only putting a little bit of black on there to change that so that it looks like a light gray. So it's different than the marker. If I had colored that, it would be this bold. But our stained glass, um, to remind you of the, the fact that the glass is made to have light show through it and look very vibrant, we don't want to make it opaque like um, like these parts here, where less light will come through, we want the light to come through. So on the lamb, 
the hand for God, the hand of God, and the uh, dove for the Holy Spirit, I did not um, color those in with marker. I used my colored pencils to make shading and create those um, colors. So if you look at the stained glass, you can see that this looks like an orangey brown. So we want to try and make that. Even the banner is not white. It has that brown edge. The Holy Spirit is uh, given its texture and shape through um, the orangey brown color. And then our hand is the same way, and this almost looks orange. So uh, when I did my coloring for the picture, uh, you can see that I colored most of it with the brown and added a little more on the edges where I thought it had more shadow, but then I added orange over the top so that it would look more like this color, the flesh tone of the hand. I didn't want it to put um, yellow in there and have it look like the yellow surrounding. Um, I wanted the yellow to stand out. So um, I could show you that with this one. Just getting my brown color. And I did this light shading of the whole hand so it had some color to it. And then I went around the edges to make it a little bit darker. If you can um, see that, I'll bring it up close to. I went over those edges and, um, and then, so you can see now like the brown is there, but it's very light texture shading. I'm not trying to make it all smooth one color, but just have it look like um, a tan or um, flesh tone from far away. And then I went over these edges with um, a circular motion to give the uh, color the appearance from far away of a flesh tone. So you can see how that would um, create more of this color. And um, I often am coloring like when I'm sitting and watching television, I'll use my clipboard so that I have something to um, rest on. And when I printed mine, I did print it on cardstock because I knew that I was going to be using uh, the uh, markers and it would saturate the paper more. Um, but you can see how I took uh, the tan and the orange here and colored it in and then made shadows by adding a little more brown around the edges and then a little orange. And for the flames, I used three colors of the marker because I wanted that marker to stand out and I wanted um, this to stand out. Now when I was looking at the um, stained glass in the picture, I could see that in here there was a brown around the edges of the yellow. It wasn't actually bright yellow. Uh, it looked a little bit different than that. So um, while these yellow lines were very pure and bright, these were almost orangey and had brown on them. So when I did mine, I just did the yellow marker and then I went over around the edges with my brown pencil to shade it in so that it looked a little bit more like it. The ABBA in the um, stained glass, this is actually like blue letters written in, but in the coloring page it was written in with um, black when I printed it, so I just went over it with blue and I colored these in. And just like this, um, the Yahweh, you could see that the letters are actually have almost a white light blue background. It kind of stands out so you can see the variation in the colors. I tried to do that with my uh, lighter blue pencil that comes with the Crayola set and uh, went around the edges darker and then let some of that white paper show through so that you would get the um, texture. In these uh, little, um, they look like shamrocks, the three um, that's reminding us of Trinity again. Uh, it was a uh, bluish purple color inside if you could see that one and it almost looked like it had an orange line around the edges so it was lighter in the middle looked a little 3d so i just um, colored mine in lightly with purple and then i put orange around the outside of it 
um, to give it that color variation. So as you can see, this is a fun project to do, but at the end I wanted to, even though the stained glass doesn't have it spelled out, I wanted to make sure that um, we wrote in there um, that this is, who, the, who this is in the picture. So you could take your black marker and um, put the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit so that you remember who it is that's in the Holy Trinity and is in this picture. Um, so I hope you enjoy um, today's coloring pages, whether you do this one or you do uh, the simpler one with um, the Trinity depicted in the other way. And um, next time you go to church, look at those stained glass windows. Um, go up close and see the differences in the colors. And hopefully you go during the day so you could see the light shine through because they really are an inspiration. Peace be with you.